What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dustin Bones, and I'm here all by myself today for a very good reason. Because we normally tape our show on Sunday, and as you already know by now, this week was Super Bowl Sunday. And as you are probably also aware, your boy's team was playing this week. And at the time of this recording, I don't know how it went yet, but I'm sure we'll find out later. I'm sure, well, you already know, but... We'll be back later this week with a with a brand new episode, but we still wanted to give you something on Monday. And when we come back with our brand new episode, I'm either going to be devastated or I'm going to be jumping for joy. I don't know which yet. The Eagles are a pretty tough team to beat. So I got to admit, I'm a little nervous for this game, but we're going to find out how it went. Was my nerves justified or not? Hopefully not. Please. Let the Chiefs win again. Either way, we're going to find out. You already know, so this is old news to you. But we're going to talk about all of that later on this week on a brand new episode of Guns and Radio. And in the meantime, you're going to get yourself a collection today. But that's okay. As you can see, a collection in video form. We have never done this before. This is the very first video collection we've ever presented to you because luckily all of these episodes were archived in video form so uh we hope you enjoy this because the last time we did one of these collections we did underneath the velvet covers where we looked at our month long on shotcast saturday review of velvet revolver covers but today's collection is guns and roses covers that's right, we do sometimes cover a GNR song on Shotcast, believe it or not, rare as it might be. Uh, and today, it's going to be your boys, Axel, Slash, Duff, and everybody you love. And we're going to be checking out Black Hole Sun, Riff Raff, Come Together, which I know is not technically a Guns N' Roses song, but it's got Axel and Bruce Springsteen, I believe this is that one. I sure hope I'm not wrong about that, because I am not going to edit this clip. <laughs> and don't let it bring you down. All but one are GNR covers, but they all feature your boy Axel. Hey, it's his birth month, too. I know we're celebrating Duff on Shotcast, but we're going to celebrate a little more Axel today on this special collection edition of the Guns and Radio podcast. But don't fret. Please, trust me when I say we're going to be back later this week for an all new episode of guns and radio so if you're not already subscribed you're gonna want to subscribe because that's gonna be awesome too so we hope you enjoy this special collection and maybe it's something you haven't heard yet Hmm, maybe maybe but with that let's go ahead and start the show folks You know what Saturday's for? Two words. Not suck it. It's for the boys. <laughs> well, Damn the straight. boys will be doing crotch chops, maybe, uh, depending where we at, you know. Yeah, no, me and Caputo, we do that in public all the time. Like, little old ladies be trying to cross the road. Oh, yeah. That was me <laughs> in uh, 06, you know, after watching DX Brunetta Raw. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then me getting like taken off the square like you can't be doing that shit here oh man that reminds me of something real funny so when dave Chappelle, i'm rick james bitch that was popular oh fuck I had, a, I had a t-shirt that said i'm rick james bitch and uh i was walking through i think it was like family dollar or some bullshit in mississippi real redneck ass place And this bitch got out of the car and just stared me down the whole, just gave me this hateful fucking look the whole way I was walking in the store, this bitch, and was being a cunt about it too, like wouldn't take her eyes off of me. And so I'm just like, whatever, bitch. And like, I'm looking right back at her like, yeah, whatever, (laughs) fuck you. And then I walk in the door and as I'm walking in the door, uh, there's this elderly lady that's trying to get into a wheelchair and mm-hmm. nobody's there to help her. So I was like, here, ma'am, you mind if I help you with that? And so 
I hold the wheelchair for her. She goes, thank you so much, gentlemen. No problem, ma'am. You have a good day. And as I was leaving, mean mugging bitch came walking in to the old lady, and that was like her mom. Oh, and she my goes, God. And she comes in, and I'm over there. And as she's walking in, I'm wrapping up, helping her get into the wheelchair. I was like, you have a good day, ma'am. Thank you. And then, and then she goes, she looks at the lady and goes, it's so nice to see young people with manners these days. <laughs> After I uh, see, I didn't know that. I just saw an old lady needed help, so I was helping her. But and then it turns out, mean mugging bitch <laughs> was was like her mom or some shit. Yeah, I felt like that was an even better fuck you than a fuck you. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but you did not misread the title of the, of the shot cast today. We are going to be listening to Black Hole Sun, but it's not the Steve Carell or. Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. It's not Soundgarden version. <laughs> I don't know. The Steve Cornell version might be pretty good. It's not the stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Doing karaoke in the office. I can see <laughs> that, actually. But we're not going to be listening to that version because Guns N' Roses made this a staple of the Not In This Lifetime tour. And part of that is uh, we're going to be looking at the Exit 111 Festival precisely from 2019 when Guns N' Roses covered. Of course, they covered it often enough that it made it in our wheel, but this is the one we're reviewing. This is the one that all other performances rest on, Caputo, is this one. How good did it sound when GNR covered it? Not that great. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm just being fucking real honest here. We're, we're going to review it. We're going to give our thoughts on it. Um, Was it as bad... As we remember it. Let's find out. Let's, yeah, let's see. Here goes. I'm going to be watching a video too, so I'm not going to pause it. I'm just going to talk over it. We all know this song. This song, I don't like. I gotta admit, I don't like this song anyway. It's not one of my favorites. The original's alright. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Black <laughs> the band sounds good. Of course, the band, like, dude, the band always sounds like great, but like, it's not a song for Axel. It's just not work for his vocal style. No. I think if he would find in a different, a different, if he would take a different approach to vocals, he could still do it. He could do a better job than you know, what we've heard on the tour. I mean, he needs to accept that the days of Axl Rose, like that those days are over. Yeah, he pretty much killed like his vocals in like the nineties doing that stuff. And then he kind of came back at a time in the two thousands, and I don't know what the fuck happened else after that. Yeah, but I mean, if he would just change his approach and try to sound more like I don't know Bob Dylan or some shit, he might. You know, he probably wouldn't be that bad. Yeah. His, his low range is still good. His high is like, eh, it's here and there, but... Yeah. I will say as oh here we go. Yeah, we all know that part. We knew that yeah. was coming. I was gonna say, can we get YouTube dust and bones to cover the song? <laughs> oh god. That is not me, people. I am not the dust and bones from YouTube. 
Yeah, the, there's YouTube Dustin, and then there's this podcast Dustin. I'd normally be flattered for people thinking I sing like Axl Rose. Yeah, Fortis is getting down on my guitar. That's Richard Fortis, by the way. Flat ass Fortis is back. Flat ass Fortis, man. Girlfriend's hot. <laughs> You know, I never did one time in my whole history of being a GNR fan before they started covering this say to myself, God, I hope I go hear them sing Black Hole Sun today. Oh, yeah, I hear them sing grunge. No. Yeah. Yeah. The genre that effectively killed their genre. Pretty much. And I'm still mad about it, by the way. There we go. It was apparently cold as fuck that day, too. Yeah, it was like in October. Yeah. In Tennessee. I almost went to this. I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> Man, Fortis is tearing it up. That's Fortis, by the way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Richard Fortis is a beast, man. I know we yeah, fuck- dude. Don't man. underestimate fucking flat ass Fortis, you know, a great <laughs> guitar player. We make fun of him, but you know, he's in in all seriousness, he's he's an amazing artist. Yeah, we do make fun of him, even though you know there's a, there's a high chance since he probably lives like thirty minutes from he's gonna come here and kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do live very close. <laughs> Oh, we live uncomfortably close for me to make fun of him too damn much. Because, you know, them little skinny d- dudes can move, man. Like, I've seen Fortis in real life, and yeah, he ain't very big, and if he was a little more stockly, I would think, yeah, I can take him because he'll be slow. But nah, man, he's skinny, man, and he, he, he got a little bit of muscle. He actually he does look shape. like he's got some muscles. I think he's got, like, abs and shit, so I'm like, he's, he's yeah. probably very agile. Oh, I mean, so, like, jumping off shit. Oh, yeah, that's how he'd get me, too. He'd come down like a spider, fucking Spider-Man and shit. I'm just going to happen one day, man. I'm going to be walking to my car. All of a sudden, I'm going to get pounced on, and it's Richard Ford. It's on top of yeah. my house. You're going to Jeff. Shit about me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh, oh, this is going to sound mean as fuck, but I remember being disappointed he wasn't British. <laughs> he just looked British, you know? Oi, lad. <laughs> Hello, so, governor. <laughs> so anyway, let's give this ratings. Yeah. I'm going to let you go first on this one. I'm going to give it a half star for the band. Actually, you know what? I will say I was bragging on Fortis a lot during this while we was listening to this. I'm going to give him a whole star. Half star for the perform- for the music from the band. Another half star for for Richard Fortis on the guitar alone. One star total. Yeah, I'm going to go along the same. I mean, it's... I don't know why. Like, if they wanted to do it, like, for... Because I know they did it right after the tragic passing of Chris Cornell, you know. But they, it just kept going for too long. It's like, do it, you know, for, like, a month, two months, whatever. But, like, you got to, like, cut it after some time. It's just, like... And it's yeah. not that great live. Nobody asked for this. No one, yeah. No one asked for fucking Wichita Lyman either. <laughs> but it's in the wheel. Yeah. Fuck. That, that's Dynamic me. duo. <laughs> yeah. The covers no one wanted. And no one really needed either. So. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys, your boy Dusty Bones interrupting the fun for just a minute, but I'm telling you right now, if you have it already, you need to click the link in the description of this podcast and download TurboTax. Don't wait till the last minute to do your taxes, man. That's why your return don't come in till September. You get your money quicker if you file quicker. And the quickest way to file is with TurboTax. And they even, you don't even want to do that. Get the TurboTax app, get an expert to do it for you so you can do anything but taxes because we all hate doing our taxes. And I'm going to tell you right now, like I've told the story a couple of times on the show already, but I got my return filed and accepted by the IRS in less than an hour. So please, for your sake, my friends, download TurboTax today and get your taxes done so you don't have to worry about it. And you can get back to not doing taxes, which is what everybody wants to do anyway. All right, back to the show. I predict we will have no technical difficulties. I will leave this podcast without a headache. <laughs> um, <laughs> just like uh, last time. Remember the last time we did the Q&A on uh, Instagram? Yeah, that was my Wi-Fi, though, acting up being fucking stupid, so... Big a jabroni pirate, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> no, Hulk Hogan. Jabroni, break your back. Make your fucking humble raisin ball mother. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Before the show, we got to talking about the Iron Sheik and his Twitter account. Yeah, whoever runs Never. a Twitter account knows how to run a good Twitter account. They run virtual. It's got sure. the blue check mark, though. Yeah, it is. So but, yeah, somehow else. Like this other these other guys run it for him. The same guys that also run uh, Virgil's Twitter. <laughs> oh, you see God. Virgil's Twitter. That's some other shit right there. <laughs> He's talking about fucking Olive Garden meat sauce and fuck money. <laughs> wow. Well, um, speaking of all of that riffraff, our our song uh, of the day is going to be a riffraff. Not by ACDC, though, but uh, by Guns N' Roses. They were known to cover this quite frequently during the end of the Chinese democracy uh, era. Mm -hmm. About 2011. I still consider 2011 part of the Chai Dim tour. Yeah. That's like Uh, right at the tail end, I think, because then after that, it was um, like up close and personal, like the Vegas residency mm -hmm. and all these other little like tours that just sort of branched off from. The Chinese Democracy Tour, that, you know, never-ending tour yep. <laughs> for an album that took fucking forever to come out. I know, right? If you if you don't <laughs> count the gaps, that fucking tour started in 2001 and ended in 2011. Literally. And I mean, there if you was, don't count think, the gaps. Yeah. There was like four years below the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just don't tell that part. Yeah. But even though, taking four years out of that, that's still, what, six years? Seven? Yeah. It was close to fucking four years, I think. Yeah, because that was the end of 02. I think they came back around mid to, like, it was like the fall of 06, I think. Or is it earlier in 06? I think it was May. A little three and a half, four years, roughly. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was a while. But uh, anyway, today we're going to be listening to one of the songs they played live uh enough on that tour to make it to our list we're gonna be listening to riff raff yeah riff raff. Uh, yeah i was just looking here on setlist uh dot fm they've actually played riff raff the cover there 47 times damn yeah 47 the last time it was played was in uh the european 2017 tour nice nice well um Let's get in. Now, we're not going to compare it to the ACDC version, but I have a feeling the lyrics are going to be similar. So we have the lyrics here for the ACDC version, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at those and stuff as we uh, go on. Uh, this is the, the version we're going to be listening to and critiquing is the, the pro shot from the joint from the pay-per-view they did December 30th, 2011. Oh yeah, they did those two uh, New Year's, New Year's, the uh, end of the year shows. Yeah, that was really it was cool. Thirtieth, and I think they did the thirty first on pay per view as well, or is it just one? I think. I don't know. I seem to remember there were two. There was one. There was one from the joint, and there was one from um, somewhere in L.A. Right. For like a New Year's show. 
I don't remember. No, I think they did two back to back in 2011 at the joint. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, in 2011, uh, they did. And I think, yeah, 2001, I know they did the 29th and then the 31st. Yeah. Hmm. That was, you know, fucking eons ago. I'm still waiting on those shows. Someone fucking has them. Well, this version features, uh, of course, Axel on vocals, Bumblefoot, mm-hmm. Richard Fortas, Pittman, uh, da, 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 DJ Ashba. Slashba. Yeah, DJ Frank. <laughs> DJ Slashba. <laughs> Fortis. Flat ass Fortis. This, yeah. Flat ass Fortis. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Riff Raff. Let's start now. I didn't know any better. I think this was an ACDC song. <laughs> I was gonna say Axel shirt does love his fucking Bon Scott ACDC because that's like all they've ever really covered. This and what Whole Lot of Rosie was a big ACDC song that Guns yeah. covered. Those are both like Bon Scott era uh, ACDC. There's your boy Frank. Hey, it's Franklin. Mr. Frank. I know this video will make you dizzy if you stare at it too long. I like DJ, man. I don't know what everybody hates on DJ for. I mean, he's a great guitarist. He's very talented, not going to lie, but I don't know. I just don't think he really fit that well with Guns. Maybe because he was never really given a chance to like be a, on an album or like any sort of recording. I think that's why he gets like slapped, because maybe if he was on like Trident 2 or something, whatever, if they released some sort of album while he was still in the band, then I think the opinions may have differed. Just to see, like, what he could do, like, you know, in a songwriting uh, sort of ASCII, like, or studio even, like, yeah, kind of get my drift there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, start dissecting us some lyrics here. Oh, yeah. So uh, you want to read them to us and let's uh, let's follow along, see if we can't make a story out of this song. Yeah, for sure. So if we, uh, we start with the first verse here. You see it on television every day. You hear it on the radio. It ain't humid, but it sure is hot down in Mexico. The barmaid's trying to tell me, in brackets, ha-ha. Beginning of the end, saying it'll bend me too late, my friend. And then the chorus, so riff raff, oh, it's good for a laugh. Ha ha ha. Riff raff, go on and laugh yourself in half and smile a while. Uh, turns out he's just really fucked up on that uh, Mexican tequila, and it's just last call. And he's acting <laughs> like it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's been hammering on a fucking Patron. Or maybe he's drinking fucking Rocks tequila over there. Uh, what's that uh, That shit they put the worm in? Oh, You know what I'm talking man. about? Is that tequila? Yeah, it's like the tequila worm, yeah. Yeah. Gross. Very. Gross, gross. <laughs> gross. Glad S. Ford is rocking on the guitar. Oh shit. We've commented more on his ass in the last several episodes of our show here. Yeah, I think it started from that one watch along we did, where it just literally had a camera angle on his ass for a good minute. Uh-huh. 
and we're just like, are you going to switch this yet, or what? <laughs> For <laughs> an awkward the guitar. Period, He's though. doing a solo. Stop looking at his ass, you freak. I don't know, well, I think now it's Bumblefoot thing. doing it. Ooh. Definitely instrumental heavy. I'd say so, yeah. See old Pittman in the background. Waving that towel. He didn't. He, yeah, he didn't get his own. <laughs> Wee! We got towel, baby. Yeah. Ooh, oh, it's tasty. Man, Ron is so good. Axel still didn't sound bad yet. Oh, dude, yeah, 2010, 2011 Axel was really good. And then Bridge School happened. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. And then after that, I was like, eh. I mean, he'd still struggle sometimes, but mm -hmm. not like fucking Iceland. Yeah, not like after 2017. Or I think even in the middle of 2017. I don't know. There wasn't any really good iconic stuff in 2017. Like, the year before that, 2016 was pretty good. But then, yeah. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Riff Raff by Guns N' Roses. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Mm -hmm. Well, Caputo, we've reached the time of the show. Where we give our final thoughts on the song we just heard. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do this? Um, I'll, I'll go paper, first. Scissors for it? Yeah, okay. no, I'll, I'll take the lead on this one. That's a pretty good cover. I mean, it's just like Guns N' Roses, do we need any more fucking covers, though, at this point? Like, and like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but like, this is like that point in like the, the Chiden like sort of era, that tour where like, Dude, like, everyone got a fucking solo. There's, like, 74 covers. Like, I swear, like... Ha I swear, if you look at a set list from, like, 2011, 2012, half of it is, like, a cover, or, like, someone gets a fucking solo, and it's, like... Well, why if, you, are we if, you look, if you look at covers, they only really cover Riff Raff and Whole Lot of Rosie during this time. They did The Seeker, I think, after this. I'm pretty the sure. The Seeker came during The Joint. Um, yes, that was around 2012, I think. Yeah, and then it wore out its welcome and never went the fuck away. Yeah, that's We've true. covered The Seeker on this show, I believe. Yeah, it was one of our, I think it was like, in our first year we did that. Yeah. Remember uh, it coming up, I thought. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent cover. I mean, like, this is, you know, um, Axel just loves his Bon Scott ACDC, like I said earlier. It's pretty good. Um, I think, did he ever play this with ACDC when he did that thing? I think. I think so. Probably. Because uh, that would be like an interesting comparison to do between the two. Like, here's him with like Guns N' Roses doing it, and then here's him with like, you know, Angus and the boys. Uh, so maybe he's got to do it a little differently, but still, um, it's all right. Is it like my favorite sort of like tune our live cover? No, but it's pretty good. I'll just give it a solid three out of five because there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just there. It's just, you know, it's another cover. It's cool thing from you know that era of the band but that's the era of the band that i'm like kind of like like a little frustrated with because like fucking everyone gets a solo and not everyone needs a solo yeah yeah does he read piano so that's nice yeah. but like eh. does he really need one no i like the dizzy solo man when he would do uh um uh, teenage wasteland yeah, like that, and like, I don't know why does Frank need a drum solo? You can, like, Junar hasn't had a drummer do a drum solo since 93. I guess they wanted to change it up. Yeah. No, Frank didn't get a solo. Tommy, Bumble, Pittman, and Frank didn't get solos. Tommy got a solo, Bumble got a solo, Ford has got a solo, DJ got a solo, I, and Dizzy. I swear Frank got a solo a couple of times. 
Or you just do like a quick little like drum thing. I don't know. It wasn't like anything. It wasn't like he a long thing. He would go doom 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 doom, and then they'd go guns and roses. I think they had in one of the earlier shows. Like in, I don't remember. There was like a short drum solo we did. Maybe. I'm saying there was not. I'm just saying I I never. Any of the shows I attended, he never did one. Yeah, it's just from what I can recall. I could be wrong, but who knows? Um, the I found this. Let's see how this sounds. This is Axel in 2016 with Angus. With uh, Axel DC. Yeah, that sounds more like he's going to be more into his Bon Scott style voice there. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, but you got to remember, Axel did sound better in ACDC. Mm -hmm. For some fucking reason, isn't that weird? Yeah, it's like, well, bitch, you got to put in work in two bands, you know? <laughs> Might as well. If you're, going, if you're going to do the work, do it right, right? Yeah, dude, 2016 Axel was like starving artist Axel. He's like, put me on anything. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, did you give it a number? Yeah, I give it like, it's the three out of five. Uh, yeah, that's about how I feel. It's cool because I was there for a few of them. And it was neat when you're there, I guess, and it's one of your first shows. And you know what I mean? To go see GNR live and then they play Riff Raff and you're not really expecting it. Mm -hmm. I, I can I can see the coolness in that much better much more than I can fucking Wichita lineman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. This is three. Yeah, it's yeah. a solid three from both of us. Yeah, yeah, I was going to give it a two and a half. I was like, no, this is unnecessarily yeah. critical. Because there's worse covers. I mean, we covered one a couple weeks ago here on Shotcast. And, uh, oh. Yeah. Black Hole yeah. Time! Black Hole Time! Hole time! <laughs> Safe. Yeah, that was awful. Hey, That's what's right. up, guys? I'm oh, a layover. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't play the third man dance song. This oh, well, uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, this is my very first uh, Shotcast Saturday appearance. Ooh. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah, it's also third man Dan week here on the podcast. So. It, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, apparently yeah. it is yeah. celebration. Ooh, that's good. And uh, we hope that you've uh, enjoyed Monday's episode. We hope you enjoyed the the band this week of Rick Dancer. We hadn't taped that yet, so I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, what else? Uh, getting dizzy with it. Mm -hmm. All of which you can get access to the day we record the show exclusively on gunsandradio.com. So that's, I feel up. like, I feel like Guns N' Roses should do that. Didn't like other bands do that where like after they performed a concert, you can buy the concert on a CD or something. Didn't that happen years ago? Slash used to do that. Oh, really? he did. I didn't know that. Yeah, Rick his, and I his went, first solo tour, the Slash yeah. and Friends album, yeah, 2010. Oh, wow. When me and Rick went and saw Slash in Atlanta, back then it was Slash featuring just my, it was just Slash featuring Miles Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the announcer uh, said in the album, this is the only reason I know this, before they were the conspirators, I'm convinced, I can't find any proof of this anywhere, but they used to be called Face for Radio. Because it was, he said, oh, all right, Atlanta. Welcome to the stage, Slash, featuring Miles Kennedy and Face for Radio. Hmm. So that's where I get that they used to be called Face for Radio. That's a good oh. tidbit. I didn't know that. I have no <laughs> other proof other than that one CD. <laughs> and, and I may have misunderstood him, and he could have said something like, and he has a Face for Radio. Nope. I believe you over that, over them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of things that suck, uh, were we just talking about things that suck? Let's talk about things that suck for a minute. The Beatles is <laughs> uh, uh, the, the song that we're going to be reviewing today. Axl Rose and Bruce Springsteen co covering Come Together by The Beatles. 
And you said that you had some information on this? Yes. I actually really enjoy this performance because I've watched it a lot of times in the past. But this was never rehearsed. And the fun fact about this is the actual duet was supposed to be Elton John and Rod Stewart. Huh. And Rod yeah. Stewart couldn't make it because there was like an <clears throat> earthquake in L.A. at the time or something. Oh, so I shit. don't know why Elton John didn't like go up on stage and perform it by himself. But when it happened, the guy in charge, when they found out Rod Stewart couldn't make it, the guy in charge went up to Bruce Springsteen and it's like, hey, dude, you're here. Do you want to perform this song? And Bruce Springsteen legit was like, nah, get the fuck out of my face. Like, I don't want <laughs> to do it. So then their next choice was Axl Rose. And he was like a table away. And they went up to Axel and they're like, hey, here's the lyrics. Do you, do you want to do it? And he was like, yeah, hold on. I'm going to go talk to Bruce Springsteen. And maybe I can convince him. So literally, I don't even know. Maybe this is a half an hour period. But Axel walked up to Bruce Springsteen and said, like, hey, dude, like, come on, let's do this. Here are the lyrics. You sing this part. I sing that part. And they went on stage, not rehearsed at all. They just did their own thing. And that was it. All right. Let's see if that comes across when we review the song. I'm going to hit play right now. Okay. Let's do it. And this was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 1994. Mm-hmm. What Go would be figure. the last appearance of Axl Rose for six years? Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Did he appear at another Hall of Fame? Because I think a one he sure didn't go to. No. Such a boring fucking song. That's not fair. It's less boring with Axl singing. I love Bruce Springsteen, too, so it makes it better for me. Double better for me. Oh, yeah. I haven't plugged on here that I was on a Bruce Springsteen podcast recently. You were. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we retweeted on the Twitter there, but yeah. go check okay. it out. Yeah, good guy. Good, 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 set, good. Lust, set Lusting Bruce. Yeah, yeah Set Lusting Bruce. Bruce. But that guy was really nice to me, so. Yeah, That's shout good. out Jesse Jackson. Yep. Good man. Smoke some weed. <laughs> it really does add to it knowing that they didn't practice this at all. They, oh, they yeah. probably just saw the lyrics 10 minutes before and just went out. You know, there's a video you can watch along with us. I'll put a link in the description. We didn't do the countdown, but if you really want to watch with us, uh, just do your homework. Because I was this wasn't originally going to be a uh, watch along, but I guess it is now. Looks like old school Monday Night Raw with that TV in the background. I wonder, did Axel have a teleprompter in there? Probably. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Knowing him, he probably did, yeah. It was the monitor guy that... Oh, we haven't told that story yet. I can't believe that you made a really good point. That was like the last Hall of Fame he's ever been to. Or the only Hall of Fame he's ever been to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say the only... That's crazy. At least. I love how they. What pissed me off about GNR in the Hall of Fame was that they 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 kept saying the classic, the original lineup, and they kept saying, and I was like, motherfucker, it ain't the original lineup. Oh, because Izzy wasn't there, or what do you mean? Tracy Guns was never mentioned. Oh yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Such good, talented man here that could have put together such a better song. It's like when you got a best friend and you're just watching them at the casino piss their money away. <laughs> that's, that's what you I feel really like hate the was. Beatles, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, I know you do. I'm just like, yeah, I know you're disgusted with them. You probably can't wait for all of them to be dead. It'd be nice. Oh so then at least society can start moving on and forgetting about that's it. That's it. That's what's holding back society, the Beatles being alive. It <laughs> is. It really is. I keep hoping some of, one of them is going to say something. Uh, That'll get them uh, canceled? Get them canceled, yeah. <laughs> Cancel Ringo Starr. Yeah, just just because. Do we, do we need a reason anymore? Make one up. Let's get rid of it. I mean, I don't like Nirvana either, but Kurt Cobain kind of took care of that for me. Good God. Why can't the Beatles Jeez. do something decent with their life, too? It's a fucking Dustin Bones shoe promo here. <laughs> <laughs> this is pre-snakeskin boots, Axel, as we can see here. 
Is he still wearing like a denim? Is he wearing? Right. I I can't tell. Let's see. This is pre. I think, uh, I think that very shirt is the one he has wrapped around his waist now. Yeah, that's what. Okay. This is pre sports local sports team jersey, Axel. <laughs> Go local sports team and or college. And pre like oh six, Axel were actually dressed up nice for once. Uh yeah yeah. Well there you have it, folks. We just watched it. I'm not gonna sit through your YouTube ad. Credit Thank you. Can help you find credit it. karma. It's inaccurate. Don't buy it. Unless they sponsor the show, then sure, they're great. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, ratings, guys. Dan, you're a guest. Would you like to rate this? Uh, I'm going to say a four. Oh, I really okay. enjoy the performance, and I really enjoy that combo. I feel like the combo of Axel and Bruce, I don't know. I just I feel like you don't see stuff like that anymore. Amazing potential it has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It, it still would to this day. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you want to go next? Uh, it was a for something that wasn't rehearsed and like pretty much like last minute on the fly. It's not bad. I'll give it a three. This is pretty cool, like to have these the these two like icons of you know music and rock on mm-hmm. the same stage doing something like this. You know, in tribute for um, the Beatles, whatever. Um, if it was probably given like rehearsal more time, I think it could have been a lot better performance. But it's not bad. It's pretty cool, uh, especially for what would be like. Sort of like the last you'd see of like Illusions era Axl Rose and then like him going into like reclusiveness, becoming like the Howard Hughes of rock and roll. Mm, so it's, yeah. it's pretty cool, like, you know, in hindsight and just like history wise as well. Yeah, history wise, I agree with you. And I agree with Dan's point also about it. Uh, Bruce Springsteen is an amazing artist and oh man, such good potential we could have had with Axl Rose and Bruce Spring. Think if they collaborated together on an original song. Dude, one I song. Mean, then. They still can. I think Chris just said it. They still could, which is yeah. like, I mean, I, I think Bruce Springsteen's last album was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, that's and true. He, and he's, 70, he's like 70 years old or over 70. I see. He has a podcast to... with Obama too now. Or yeah, something. that was great. I listened to that too. I loved it. Like, yeah. I mean, I would, but you know, like I said, on such a dull, horrible song, the the talent involved in this was just wasted. It was, it would be like, it would be like if you got Picasso and I don't know Michelangelo, I don't know painters, but let's just say some great fucking painters together and had them make you a macaroni picture. Like that's the equivalent of what we just went. Now I want to see that. <laughs> like, you, you can't just you can't just set up that scenario and me not imagine that. Yeah, what the hell, man? Oh man, but yeah, I'm gonna give this a zero because fuck the Beatles. A zero. Oh you God. know what? You know what? I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna give it a half star for Bruce and another half just for. There Axel. you go. I was gonna say at least star. a at least something like that. That's come on, yeah. The song itself can suck a dick. But the two artists involved, I mean, I still, like, the the thing about what I said when I was watching about, like, it feels like I'm at the casino watching a good friend of mine piss his money away. That's, it's just, it's just I just feel like wasted potential. The boys are back in town! Oh, no! <laughs> that should be and, YouTube Dustin Bones' next cover. <laughs> I'm going to put in a yeah. request. Yeah, put in a request. If he answers your comments, because he don't answer mine. Yeah. <laughs> This is our last, uh, no, this is our first shot mm-hmm. cast of July. It's July 3rd. Isn't that like Canada Day or some shit? It's technically July. That'd be July 1st. Oh. Yeah. Well, so tomorrow, it's, this, it's the same. It's the whole weekend of uh, Canadian American Independence Days. Tomorrow is the day. I know you Canadian folks don't really celebrate, but you should. We we celebrate three days earlier. It's all right. (laughs) You celebrate, okay, the 4th of July, three days early. I'll take that as long as that's what you're really celebrating. We we take the first, you take the fourth of the month. You know, it is what it is. Usually they line up around the same weekend. It's okay. Yeah, yours was on a Thursday, though. Hey, at least you get off work, right? Which is really, it's really weird. But yeah, yeah, so... I think with that, though, they're probably just going to, with most places, they'll probably just give you the Friday off and that whole fucking weekend. Uh, well, 
I know I'm excited for it. I normally go back to Mississippi this time of year and throw down redneck style to celebrate America. God damn it. Go bless America. We should have picked a America song for this episode. Yeah, did any of the, the members ever cover like the Star Spangled Banner or something? <laughs> Surely Slash played it at a... At a at fucking a, baseball game or something. Yeah. I mean, Lord knows Metallica do it every fucking year in San Fran, so... Uh, I don't know. Let me see. So apparently, yes! Here's a Slash playing the Star Spangled Banner. During a hockey game, nonetheless. Oh. In Canada. Take that. <laughs> oh, it really is a hockey game. I was just kidding. We ask that you please rise and remove your hats. And welcome our very special guest and our Northrop Grumman hero of the game, Sergeant Corey Lamell of the U.S. Marine Corps. Why are they doing all this in Canada? I don't understand. It's not Canada, then. Yeah. It's in America. Yeah, no, but, it's hockey, though. Yeah, but it's in America. There are two American teams. Oh, we don't have America, hockey in America. That's Canada, man. We have football. 90% of the teams in the NHL are fucking American. No, no they're all you, Canadian. You, you guys, not took, cold you guys took our here. sport and had to take 90% of the fucking teams. There's only seven Canadian teams. It's a Canadian. All right. But I don't get There's no doubt that that's Slash, by the way. Yeah, you could easily tell. His playing style is so unique that it's almost... Slash's guitar is almost as unique as Axel's voice. I'd say so. You can just tell it's a Gibson Les Paul. <laughs> That's how you know. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, see, those are those are Canadian folks. They... I was going to say, yeah, most of the people who play on American teams are fucking Canadian. Yeah, let's see. They got the American flag because, you know, I mean, Canada. <laughs> it's not cold enough down here for hockey, Caputo. Some places, yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what, Minnesota? Yeah. I mean, hell. <laughs> Alaska. LA has like two teams. Huh. I don't watch hockey. I don't know. I feel bad for turning off the spark, Star Spangled Banner, talking through the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, all the Patriots are going to unfollow and do like this now, so. Oh, well. We played it. We're playing it for the sake of radio, for the sake of honoring the 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 great day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hold that note, hold that note, Slash. <laughs> I don't remember this part. <laughs> He's gotta That's have a Slash a original, man. <laughs> He's got to have a guitar solo during this part. I was going to say, it's probably, he's probably still shredding for like 40 minutes, and they just cut off the feed. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, enough is enough, Slash. Come on, you... All right, Slash. All right. Yeah. Calm your tits, kid. God bless America. And uh, we hope you all have a great 4th of July, great Canada Day for our Canadian friends listening. Yes. And for everybody else in the world... Uh, we hope you'll celebrate both on behalf of our great nations. Let your neighbors ask questions about why you have these other countries' flags waving in your yard uh, <laughs> on this weekend. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird? Like you're in fucking Belgium or some shit and then <laughs> you decide to have a 4th of July <laughs> or a Canada Day. <laughs> Why not? You, I don't know. Hey, if you, if you love our country, it's better than yours. <laughs> you ever even been to America or Canada? No, I haven't. Fuck you. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast that said to do it. <laughs> I, I do everything everyone else tells me to do. <laughs> That's right. That's the way to be. If we tell you to do it, though, you should do it. Because we're never wrong about stuff. Yeah. Most of the time, I'd say. 90%. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> yeah. But we're also not accountable if you do some of the stupid shit that we've told you to do on this show. So Yeah. Yeah. But don't let it bring you down. This is the actual song we're covering this week on Shotcast. 
Yeah, we never told them that, did we? No, we didn't. Uh, well, the song, <laughs> the song that we're covering on Shotcast this week, if you hadn't guessed by the title of this episode, is Don't Let It Bring You Down. Uh, Axel was on a Neil Young, uh, uh, or a Neil Diamond. No, Neil Young. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kick? Yeah. After that amazing Bridge School Benefit performance. Yeah. I mean, and uh, tanked it so hard. It was like, oh, well, we got to redeem ourselves, you know. Look, and they man, played it tw 19 times. Yeah, I was at, I know two of those shows. Because wasn't it during the residency, Appetite for Democracy? Yeah, so I have it here. The first time I was ever played in concert was at Bridge School. And the last time I was ever played, July 15th, 2013, at the Sound Academy in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Oh, nice. Check you out. Yeah. That's the you one show I, show I that's the one show I couldn't go to because it was like it was a nineteen plus show and I was still too young then. Ah oh, damn. Wait, nineteen? Yeah. It was nineteen in Canada? That's a, that's like their legal that's like the legal age, basically for everything. For alcohol Not 18? and all that shit. No, no. Nineteen, you have to be nineteen to go and get into nightclubs and shit. What about to drink beer? Nineteen. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So you so can like, be okay. So that's like the compromise. So you've got the twenty-one. You, you've got to wait a year from the eighteen, but you don't have to wait till you're twenty-one to get to do the fun shit. Yeah, eighteen, you're basically like a legal adult. You can vote and all that shit. And nineteen is basically you get you can buy booze, you know, smokes, whatever, all that shit. Get fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Marijuana. Yes, uh, that's also yeah. That's our legal age here. Nice. All right, let's get into the song some more. I'm 14 seconds in. I'm not going to rewind it. But uh, I think you're going to love these this vocal track, guys. Poor Axel, man. <laughs> yeah, this is around like that time where I don't know what was happening with his voice. It was starting to go to shit. Yeah, around 2012. Like, I don't know. It was a, it it was a bit of a decline. It came back, though. Right when Slash and them came back? Yeah, like he had like the fucking rejuvenation again. He's like, listen, we were fucking, you know, mostly reunited. We're going to make a shit ton of money. I guess that motivated him. And then, I don't know, just doing the same old mundane Literally a year and a half later. It is. I feel like, Maybe. yeah, I feel like she gets bored easily. That seems like to be Axel's thing. She gets very bored easily. Maybe. But like, you know, I guess he's, you know, stuck in a, a hellish blood bond with uh, <laughs> Team Brazil or something. He's like chained at the shackles for life. So <laughs> Brazilian mafia. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> I still fucking laugh when I hear that. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that's insane. But here we go. guitar solo I don't know who does the solo on this it's either Fortis Bumblefoot or DJ one of the three yeah a mixed or I don't know they, they probably split it up like you get five notes I get like seven <laughs> and you get the rest Bumblefoot it's okay I will tag team it <laughs> yeah I'll do, and then do, 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 do and then <laughs> I do feel like Bumble carried that group 
Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We could have just had Bubblefoot and Fortis. It still would have been fine. Yeah. But let's try them, you know, three guitars, because why the fuck not? <laughs> I, I don't get it, but yeah. Because excess and fame, you know, it's all about rock and roll. Damn right. Let's make it more excessive, you know. Like, like we didn't spend $13 million on this album. Do what? Like, we didn't spend $13 million on this album that took about roughly 13 years. That's a million dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. And dude, like, seeing the report stuff, what they spent it on was, like, ridiculous shit. What'd they spend it on? Dude, um, I think there was, like, the interview with Zootot, where he's talking when he took over the project in 01. He's like, bro, these guys are spending money on all this equipment that they rented, and they, like, fucking used once. Oh, yeah. Like, and it's like, why like do you... A... Yeah. And, like, studio, like, basically renting out studios and shit, and, like, the equipment. And it's like, you never use this. Why the fuck do you need it? Like... Yeah. It just sits there. Yeah, because wasn't there, like, a Les Paul or something that they were renting that was, like, a $1,000 a day or some shit? Oh, yeah. It was, like, five grand a month or something. <laughs> and it was just sitting in a corner, and nobody was touching it? Literally. That, that was it. It was like that, a few, a bunch of other fucking guitars just there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Don't let it bring it. you down, though. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. That, that's the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> I got to admit, I lost, our, I lost my place earlier when I was trying to hit pause. I accidentally hit something else. We're just going to fast forward a little bit. All right. I mean, instrumentally, it's fine. Oh, yeah, like, the band, like, themselves sound great. It definitely sounds like they took their own spin on this song. Well, they did that with everything they played. Mm hmm Even liquor and whores. Like, yeah. That sounded very bubble for it. It's only Maybe. castles burning. So find someone who's turning. You will come around. Don't let it bring you down by Guns N' Roses. Neil Young cover. Yeah. All right, so final thoughts. What do you think? You want me to go first? You want to go? Oh, first? I'll let you go first on this one, Dustin. Uh, if I wasn't there for, if I didn't have good memories attached to this, I'd hate it. Because to be mm -hmm. honest with you, uh, it's not one I would ever show anybody when I'm trying to say, check out GNR. Look how awesome it is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, half a star. Half. Okay. Damn. That's <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go like maybe like one and a half or two and a half. Um, now you show. do you. Don't I don't know. Influence. Yeah, like I'll give it one thing. Like the band, like sounds fucking great. Whatever instrumentally, it sounds very good. Axel here, no, not really. Yeah. Like he, I don't know. Twenty, like twenty ten. Axel was really fucking good. Twenty eleven was whatever. Twenty twelve. I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I feel like I don't know like I don't know yeah seriously I don't know what the fuck happened with 2012 Axel yeah yeah that, I think that was like the start of like the the downward like sort of I don't know I guess spiral trend whatever the fuck you want to call it but I mean it's okay the song I maybe would have listened to it randomly for like shits whatever it'd be like oh yeah this is I remember this is totally a part of fucking junior history this is one of the 75 fucking random covers they decided to play for it's like 10 times it's a part of GNR history for me mm -hmm. personally, you know, because, you know, I was there for a few of these shows. Yeah. I, I was, you know, I was going to see the band a lot during this era. So, I mean, for me personally, it's a part of my history with the band, mm -hmm. but I don't really, that gets at that half star. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Like I maybe like randomly would like look look for it like if I was really in the mood for it, but it's I don't know. I'm probably gonna go one and a half on this one because like instrumentally great, 
Axel, no. So that's kind of like brings it fucking down, you know, yeah. ironically. No, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it bring it down. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this special video collection edition of the Guns and Radio podcast. Hey, if you want to know, which we are coming back later this week with a brand new episode. So if you want to know when that's going to drop, head over to our Facebook and you can get links to all of our social media as well as all of our other fun stuff, including our Discord, by the way, over at GunsAndRadio.com. And if you come over to GunsAndRadio.com and get your Discord invite, you can join the conversation. Plus, we're going to announce when the new show is going to be coming out this week over there as well. And we'll be there to chat with you anytime you want. So head over to GunsAndRadio.com, get your Discord invite, and be sure to come back next week on the guns and radio pod well not next week come back later on this week for a brand new episode of the guns and radio podcast and until next time on behalf of my good friend chris caputo i'm dustin bones peace out and keep on rocking in the free world good night everybody